G'day everyone, Tim from vMix here, and today we're going to be taking a look at vMix Call. vMix Call is an easy way to add remote guests into your production with high quality audio and video. All your guests need is a webcam and the latest version of the Google Chrome browser on their device, with the exception of iPads and iPhones where they'll need to use Safari. Now vMix handles all of the audio and video, so you don't have to worry about audio echoes and additional equipment. vMix Call begins with vMix HD with one call, 4K with four calls, and Pro with eight calls. So let's jump to it. Now I have a basic production here in vMix, but I would really like to add a remote guest to make it even more awesome. So firstly, I'll need to go to the bottom left and the Add Input menu. Then I'll need to select Video Call, which is the last on this list here. So on the Video Call screen, you'll see two options up the top, Host a Call and Connect to a Call. Host a Call is when you want to add a remote guest to your production. The guest will be able to connect to your production with their webcam and their browser. Now the Connect to a Call feature is a little bit different. That allows you to be a guest on someone else's production by sending them your vMix output but we'll go over that in a little bit more detail later on. All right, so next underneath that, you'll see the password box. So that contains an automatically generated unique number for connecting to a vMix call. You just need to provide this number to your guest and then get them to navigate to vmixcall.com. Then they just need to enter that password, their name and connect to your production. Now we also offer a slightly easier method to connect and that's by using this URL here. So you can email that link to them and then that will automatically load up their browser and then it will enter their password at vmixcall.com and they just need to then enter their name. But if you do use this option, make sure they're using the correct browser. Below that, you'll see the return feed settings. This is the content that you are sending back to your guest. So the content that's going to be seen in their web browser. Now you can choose what video source you want to send them by selecting from this drop down here. Now this is going to default to your main output which is what you're going to be producing and seeing in your recording and your streaming. Now, most guests will want to see this so they know if they're being broadcast live on air. Now, if you do have vMix 4K or Pro, you can configure one of your four outputs uh, here, so with different video sources, if you wanted to. You could choose to send them a preview, a multi-view, or build your own input to send them. Now, the video bandwidth down here refers to the video feed that you're going to be sending your guest. Now you can control the bandwidth you send them by choosing an option from the drop down menu here. Now sometimes guests will have a limited internet connection, so you can choose to send them something as low as 300 kilobits or HD if you wanted to. Now, if you choose a lower option here, that's going to help ensure that the video that they're sending you for the call is going to be as high quality as possible. The video they send you is what's being broadcast, so that's what's most important. So I'm just going to select uh, this 720 option here, but you might want to go lower if they don't have a great connection. Now vMix Call will automatically attempt to send the highest quality from your guest with the maximum quality of 720p. This quality will be adapted in real time based on their internet connection. vMix Call currently uses WebRTC to connect to your guest directly using a peer-to-peer -peer connection. Making sure that you have sufficient bandwidth is important and will help determine the quality of the call. The audio source section allows you to choose what audio mix is being sent to your guest. Regardless of what option is being selected here, Mix Minus is handled automatically by vMix. So if I choose to select the master audio from this list here, it means that the guest will hear the master audio of your production, but they won't hear their own microphone because the Mix Minus is automatically done in vMix. So you won't hear yourself back. Now vMix has a number of ways to route audio, so you could actually choose to send back a different audio bus uh, from your vMix production to your guest, one that might contain different audio sources like your own microphone so it's not heard on the master output. But you could play around with different audio buses uh, in vMix for that. Next you'll see a tick box for allow only direct peer-to-peer -peer connections. Now by default vMix will attempt to connect using a peer-to-peer -peer connection but on some occasions it will need to fall back to a server connection if there are firewall or connection issues. Ticking this box will disable the server fallback, which is handy in diagnosing if something is preventing a direct connection. 
Now underneath that, you'll see an advanced section. Now this is for advanced users only. So if requested by vMix support, you may need to turn on the debugging option up the top here. Underneath that, you're going to see a low latency mode. Now this is for very high speed internet connections like fiber to fiber only, and only if you're in a close proximity to each other. So this is for advanced users with really great internet that are close to each other. So you can click on the more information boxes here or the links here for any more information about these options. So if you've got this selected and you're seeing dropouts, make sure that you turn that off. All right, so once that's completed, you just need to click the OK button down the bottom and you're going to be able to see it in your production like so. So as you can see here, I now have a call option here in my production. So now we need to jump over to the laptop and check it out. So I'm gonna move over to my laptop over here and I'm going to set that up now. So first of all, um, I'm going to put on my glasses so that you know it's a different person. All right, so here we are ready to go on this. So I've got Google Chrome open and I need to go to VMix call, whoops.com. So I've gone to vmixcall.com and I'm gonna enter my name which happens to be Tim. Um, and then for the password, I need to enter the password that I've just created on my production. So that is 76958283821. And then I'm going to click join call. So if this is the first time that you've connected VMix call up to Chrome, it will ask you if you're going to use the uh, microphone and the camera. So you wanna select yes for that. So we have a full video about how to actually connect to a call using all kinds of different devices. And that's linked in the description below. So um, just ignore the guy with the beard. Um, he was just going through a thing. I don't know why he had the beard, but that's how it is. All right, so as you can see here, I've got my Google Chrome open and I've connected to my call. Now, the first thing that you're going to notice in the top left-hand corner here is your own webcam. So that's the camera that's connected to the browser that you're sending to the vMix production. Now, the video in the center here that is what is being sent to you from vMix. So if I was making a production, so if I on my vMix production, I switch to this video, that's what you're seeing back. Okay, so it's a very simple and straightforward interface. There's not much going on just so we can make it as uh, simple as possible. So what we've got here down the bottom here, we can end the call by clicking this. Uh, we can turn and mute the camera by clicking this. Uh, we can mute our audio by clicking this here. We can then remove the preview if we don't want that by clicking that. We can make it full screen by clicking this here. And then finally, we can remove and add the chat on the side here. So vMix call has a very basic chat interface that I can say things like, um, let's go, good to go. So I can send that back to the producer and the producer knows that I am good to go based on that chat message. All right, so now that we've jumped back to vMix, we can now see that my laptop is now in my production. So I've now got the vMix call coming in to the production and I can use it as a part of my show, just like I would with any other input or camera. So typically you wanna treat it like a normal camera input so that you can always hear the guest in the production, regardless of whether it's in the output or not. So for example, you can currently see that the audio is off for my vMix call. Now, if I switch that to the program, you'll see the audio go, go green, green and it's, and now, it's now, on. now on. Now, what you'll wanna do is make sure that you go into the settings for the input, go to the general section, and then go to automatically mix audio and turn that off. So what that means is when you switch an input to the program output, it turns on the audio. But when we have cameras, we usually wanna have them heard all the time. So now that I've turned that feature off, I can now manually control whether the audio is on for that call. So if I want the call to be heard at all times during the production, I can just and leave the audio, the audio on, on like, so. like so. It's probably going to echo. So yeah, I can turn on that on and turn it off. It doesn't have to be in the program output to hear the audio. So now that I've got it in my production, I can go ahead and create different uh, looks with it. So I can go to the like a double box in here in the virtual set. I could build my own GT title for it if I wanted to as well. So I'm just going to quickly show you what this looks like. So I've selected box one, box two, and now I've got now I've got my production in here ready to go. Now, as I said before, I would always have the audio on here so I can always hear it, but I don't want that to feed back into this tutorial. So that's how you can use it in your production. You can build, like I said, titles and all that kind of thing. So as you can see now on the laptop, 
um, I'm now sending back the double box in my production so I know what's going on. So you can also make real-time changes to the call input by right-clicking on it and then selecting, say, a different video feedback or a different audio source back. Uh, and you can also change the return bandwidth. So if they were having problems with their internet connection, you could lower this to something even lower if you wanted to. So at the top of that menu, you'll also see Open Call Manager. So if we open up that, it'll show some of the diagnostics of the call, like what it's connected at, 720, around two megabit, uh, 30 frames per second, uh, the latency, that kind of thing. You'll see the password up the top. You can also scroll at the top here to grab that password as well. Now, um, you'll also see the chat. So I said, good to go here. So I can say yes uh, here, and that will go back into the production. So you can actually see that on the call. So the caller can then see that you've replied to them on that chat. So up the top of that screen, you'll also see a statistics section here, which will show things like um, packet loss and that sort of thing if you're trying to run diagnostics, if you've got a bad internet connection or something like that. So you may be doing a production and you'll have the same guest on all the time. So if you save your preset with this call in it, then when you open up your preset there, it's going to be available for the next show with the same password. Now, if you wanna give out a new password, you could go into the settings here uh, and you click change and then you could create a new video call. So that will then populate anything you've got in vMix like a double box with that same particular input, but with a different password. Now you could also then go into add input and then go to video call as well to generate a new password. VMix call passwords are meant for you and your guest. So don't make them public as people might try and connect to your call and kick your existing guest off. If you're looking to add new guests to your show, it's always best to create a new password. So NDI is also supported with vMix call. So you can route your call to a different switcher that supports NDI. So just go into your output settings down here and then you can turn on vMix call in this section here. Now, if you do have vMix 4K or Pro, you could also route one of your outputs here um, with your vMix call as well. So that's up to you. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you are routing your vMix call via NDI, you'll have to manage your own mix minus for those inputs. Now, you might wanna consider using one of the different audio buses to help organize that. So as I quickly mentioned before, there's a second way that you can use vMix call in vMix, and that's to connect to another vMix production. So if we go to add input, go to video call down here, and then go to connect to a call, it will allow us to connect up to another production. Now, they will need to create the password for you, so you just enter the vMix call password, enter your name, and then underneath that, you can choose the return feed that you're going to send them. You can select the video source, and you can select the video bandwidth here. If you're connecting vMix to vMix, you can actually send a higher quality video than via the browser. So you can connect up to 1080 4 megabit, as you can see down here. Now underneath that, you can choose what audio source you're going to send them. And once you've done that, just click OK, and it will start sending through your production to the host. Now using vMix to vMix means that you can easily screen share. So if that's something that you want to do, then you could grab a vMix trial or perhaps use vMix Basic HD uh, in order to send your screen. So you could send your desktop and you could also send your camera by switching between them. Currently, we don't have screen sharing support in the browser version of vMix Call. Now, if you are having issues with vMix Call, you may need to check the firewall that your network is using. Uh, I'm going to link in the description an article to what ports you may need to open up in order to use vMix Call at your location. All right, so I hope you're still with me. Uh, now I'm just going to go over some suggestions when using vMix Call with remote guests. So it's a great idea to wear headphones when using vMix Call or keep your return audio on your speakers at a very, very low volume. So you don't want the audio to spill back into your microphone and create an echo. So although Mix Minus is set up, if somebody's talking to you through the speaker, comes back through the microphone and then back into the production, you're gonna cause an echo. So you just always, I would always recommend people use headphones. It's the easiest way to go. Now it's also easiest to use vMix Call on a laptop or a desktop. That can be a MacBook, it could be a PC, a PC based laptop as well. So they usually have pretty good webcams built into them. Uh, and it's also easy to add a USB webcam as well. If you do have to use a mobile device, iOS devices are currently offering better video quality than Android devices. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, another thing is, is I know I prefer to have a stable device like a laptop um, on a table or a desktop using a webcam uh, when someone connects to a production. If people are using mobile devices, it can make you feel 
a little seasick. So for example, if someone's got their phone and they're moving it around like this. So here's my example of what it would look like in a production. So I'm just gonna switch this up here. This is the call coming back in via the mobile and it's just, it's just really frustrating to see cameras like this. But if I set up my laptop here, I can keep it in one position and I can talk normally and there's no seasickness involved. Now, another thing to consider as well is the positioning of the camera. So this is not too bad. Uh, I've got the camera, I've got the laptop kind of almost at eyesight, but you wanna kind of have it at eye level. So you're not looking up someone's nose when they're doing their remote call in. And little things like uh, making sure that you've got lighting facing towards you and no reflections and that sort of thing. So make sure that you kind of frame the shot the best you can when doing a live production with vMix call. So if you do have someone that's like, all I've got is a phone, this is all I can use, just make sure that when they have the password that they're using vMix call in a compatible browser. Now, something to consider is that uh, sometimes third-party virus scanners cause issues with blocking things like vMix call on a computer. We've had no issues with the inbuilt Windows Defender that comes with Windows 10. So you might consider using that instead of a third-party virus scanner because they're constantly trying to block things that are added to the computer. So you can try out the full functionality of vMix Call by downloading our free unwatermarked 60-day trial. It's vMix Pro, so it offers eight video calls. So please remember that adding more calls will require more computing power and bandwidth. So please keep that in mind when doing your production. So follow the three rules of live streaming to test, test, and test again. If you have any questions about vMix Call, please send us an email. It's impossible for us to help run diagnostics via YouTube comments. As you can imagine, there's a lot of different environments and a lot of different people using vMix Call. So we need to be able to see what's happening on your connection. So just head to vMix.com and then go to the support page. And I've also included any necessary knowledge base guides in the description of this video. So thanks for watching and we'll stream you later. Thanks for watching. Click to watch another exciting vMix video or head to vmix.com for a free 60-day trial. See you later.